Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Check Out The Tech, where we go over all latest technology, see what it can do, and what it has to really offer. In today's episode, we're gonna be taking a look at the benchmarks for the Google Tensor processor. Now, Google has done their first mobile processor, so we're very curious to see how it performs in both CPU and GPU benchmarks against the Snapdragon 888. For this phone comparison, we're gonna be using the Pixel 6 Pro and the Galaxy S21 Ultra. So let's go ahead and see how they really perform against each other. All right, so let's take a look at what we have here. And over here we have the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 on the Galaxy S21 Ultra. And over here we have the Google Tensor chip on the Google Pixel 6 Pro. Now, important to note that there are some caveats both screens are set to 1440p displays. However, there is also a difference of RAM. This is 12 gigs of RAM and this is 16 gigs of RAM. So that will impact anything that has to deal with a memory test. Now, which ones are we gonna be using today? We're gonna to be using Geekbench 5, obviously, for just the CPU. We're gonna be testing out 3D Mark for the graphics performance. Geekbench ML, which is newer, it's basically developed to actually check out how the learning works on the processor and if it's gonna be really good at AI. And then of course we have the Intuitu benchmark test, which kind of does an overall performance of the phone. So let's go ahead and start with Geekbench 5. Now this is pretty interesting because Google seems to stay pretty consistent with their results. Overall with their results, what we got last time was very similar to this one. So again, very similar every time. Samsung, however, often gets different results. This one was its best scoring one out of the three times I've tested it. But as you can see the last time, it did well under what this one does. So overall, we can say at the very least they're comparable but I will say the Tensor chip is a bit more consistent at always getting the better scores. All right, and now we're going to test out the 3D Mark test to see how it does. Again, we have tested it out before, so we have previous results, but let's go ahead and to be fair, test out a fresh one. All right, and there we have it, a fresh test result for the graphics performance, and I am surprised with the Pixel 6 Pro. This is actually handedly beat the S21 Ultra, and I definitely noticed when testing that the frames per second really was a big difference. This one never dipped below 30s, and this one went all the way down to the 20s, but constantly this was just better overall. So again, really good in terms of graphics performance, and this is important because of the fact that Samsung next year might have a new processor and a AMD graphics card. So that'll be really interesting to see how it improves when that one comes out next year. All right, and this next one is going to be again from Geekbench, but this is a newer test that's supposed to test out AI functionality. So again, this is all about what Google Tensor is about. So we'll see how well it does. All right, and again, this one was a little surprising because of how long Google took to complete it. It's not too much of a difference, but definitely noticeable when you're looking at the two. This is a newer test for Android that Geekbench just released, so I'm not sure if maybe Google's just wasn't ready for it in terms of it's not set for this one or that this workload wasn't really made for it, but there is a definitely difference in performance in the numbers overall. So interesting to see how this one definitely favors the Snapdragon easily over the Tensor chip. All right, and for the last one, we're gonna test out the Intuitu benchmark. Now, this one's gonna test out the phone overall. Now, we have tested it before, but I do wanna stress one thing, and that is we're gonna go through each category specifically because Samsung should win the memory test because it does have more RAM. 
So that being said, let's go ahead and test these out. All right, so now that it's done, we can see the differences. And first off, again, we have to kind of negate the memory portion for the most part, which would bring this a lot closer at about 625 if you actually match the memory. And that is because, again, this has more RAM, so it should perform much better in that part. However, when it comes to everything else, let's go to CPU and GPU, because UX was about the same. CPU, the processor did perform better on the Snapdragon 88. So overall, it looks like when it comes to computing power, it really just is performing a bit better on this side than the Tensor chip. Again, although this does vary as we saw it go into the 7000s before, the Snapdragon 88 seems to vary more, whereas Google stays more consistent. Then we have to go over the GPU because consistently Tensor seems to perform better in terms of graphics performance than the Snapdragon does. So overall, it's a pretty good matchup because you get a better CPU and a better GPU, but which one is more important to you? Now, let's get the final thoughts. So in conclusion, I think we have some pretty satisfying results. Overall, CPU seems to be a little bit better on the Snapdragon 888. It just consistently gets a little bit better overall. However, the graphics performance on Google's Tensor it's actually beating the Snapdragon pretty handily across all the benchmarks that control GPU. So it's gonna be very curious to see how this evolves, including with next year, with the rumors of Samsung possibly using AMD graphics cards on their next mobile processors. It's very curious to see how this evolves over the next year. I have to also say I'm very curious to see if Google will actually use Tensor chips on a possible Chromebook. That is a really interesting proposition because I think it'll be a lot more powerful than a lot of the current Chromebooks out there and be able to handle high-end Android graphics-based games like current Chromebooks can't. So that should be a pretty interesting technology boost if we get it next year. Not to mention, this is only Google's first-gen version, so comparing what they do next year could be even really interesting in terms of leaps and bounds above their first-gen. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Are you interested in seeing more videos like this and what benchmark should we use next time? Thank you as always for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy.